uh, I'll start over because somebody just joined. Uh, we are going to record this session, so if you don't want your presence to be known at the session, you should leave. However, your uh, if you turn off your video, your presence will be recorded, but your uh, video will not be. So you can stay without your video being recorded, but we are recording. So actually, I should say that by attending, you agree to be recorded. <laughs> Mahung, good evening. All right, so um, uh, just we're officially not here <laughs> because, like Governor Newsom said, I think we're having to be closed for three days. Is that right? I think so. Um, so I just have a few technical people helping. <clears throat> So even though I'm here to talk about the Buddha Dharma program, uh, it's, it is open to all, but uh, may not be comprehensible to all. I hope it is comprehensible to at least a uh, select few. So when I look this way, then they see my, then you see my uh, uh, profile. I have to look right at the camera like that, right? Yes. Okay, so. Good. So uh, I want to talk first about Manjushri and uh, Dharma training that has to do with uh, study. What's unique about the program that we're doing is it's um, not an academic program like going to university or even an academic program that uh, was done through Jamyang or maybe even through uh, my Tripa College. <clears throat> it's more like a shedra, more like a, a close study group, which assumes that people are doing uh, deep training and practice along with the study. <clears throat> when uh, I was studying texts uh, and trying to learn Tibetan, of which I'm still trying, uh, Sometimes uh, my teacher would explain uh, things just kind of, this means that kind of explanation. But sometimes he would say, oh, you need to um, uh, pray to Manjushri. You need to do a Manjushri sadhana. And sometimes this really made sense, but sometimes it was frustrating because I just thought, well, you know the answer. Why don't you just tell me? But he said, no, you know, you need to uh, do Manjushri practice. Uh, sometimes even uh, he would give me some uh, Manjushri blessing pills. They look like indistinguishable from some of the uh, medicinal pills that probably, probably Dr. Kalsung gave out, but um, they were blessed by Manjushri and uh, they're special Manjushri amulets, so forth, and um, things like that. And of course, uh, particularly at Sarah Jay, uh, we, we kind of woke up uh, eliciting uh, the mantra, uh, orange Manjushri, Omara Patsana D, and then you'd end with D, 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 long, right? So you'd say that kind of loudly. <laughs> So you'd hear that in the morning, like a wake up mm -hmm. call sometimes. <clears throat> what I wanted to do um, tonight is read through uh, a few short Manjushri practices. Um, when the Kong Lungma appraises Manjushri, we have in our booklet. The other um, 
uh, Manjushri practices, I have is um, a brief Manjushri sadhana uh, translated to English of Patra Rinpoche's, <clears throat> and then also uh, a praise of Manjushri a uh, poem by Nipam uh, Rinpoche. Uh, so, <clears throat> and then uh, maybe a short uh, praise. Uh, uh, it's called A Healing Medicine of Faith by Kenshin Jigme Pudzok. So uh, he was uh, a teacher uh, that I actually met and took empowerments from. Uh, who uh, composed this on Wutai Shan, the Manchishri Mountain in China. <clears throat> uh, he gave a series of empowerments uh, in Yonville at the, uh, uh, the veterans home there. There's a large auditorium. It's quite special. It's a very beautiful setting. And um, I think he was sponsored by um, uh, Chadgar Rimshe and of course other um, teachers in the Bay Area in California. Is that better? No. <clears throat> so um, because of uh, uh, so Chadgar Rimshe is associated in my mind with um, you know is Holiness Jigme Punsuk and also a um, very famous teacher uh, that some of you may know. I know Dirk knows uh, uh, <clears throat> Kusum Lingpa, who's a very um, dynamic and spontaneous person. <clears throat> and we uh, remember like renting the crest uh, for him and um, doing the publicity through Lions Roar. <clears throat> and these very spontaneous teachers, uh, uh, you have to be very spontaneous and patient uh, to do uh, the work with them and set things up. And um, I can say with a little boasting, you guys have it easy. <laughs> so um, uh, that, that's wonderful that uh, I have these connections. And <clears throat> so a little bit of a reading for you that, and then maybe at some point we can do the Manjushri practices together. <clears throat> I don't know if you have any of them, but we have the Kang Longba praise in the booklet we put together. So um, to read tenets particularly, um, and not just, um, the Shastras, uh, it's important to be uh, in a different level of consciousness, right? A different level of approach than just taking our ordinary mind and, um, you know, just trying to understand it from that point of view. Uh, so we, we want to at least take a perspective that uh, is higher than that. So the scholarship that we're doing here at Lions Order is dependent upon people doing um, the practices that enable us to experience uh, non-dual awareness, or it's just gonna be more difficult. And then also it just makes more sense. So <clears throat> another thing that's interesting that we need to know is that of course, um, it wasn't, it's not just us that are, uh, supplicating or doing the practice of Manjushri. Um, and it's not just that, um, uh, you know, we're gonna do it part of the time, <clears throat> but uh, we're going to have that consciousness uh, with us, hopefully um, going out into daily life, correct? <clears throat> it's interesting that uh, Lama Sankapa uh, had direct uh, contact with Manjushri and uh, Manjushri gave him teachings and pointed him in certain directions and that he also depended upon um, the 
visions of Manjushri of uh, some of his other teachers and friends that he worked with. So sometimes, of course, um, in the West, um, because of great scholars uh, and the attempt of uh, Tibetans to promote Buddhism as a totally rational religion, we, um, we hear just sometimes some Tapa's great scholar, but of course did a lot of retreat, uh, did a lot of uh, training and spent a lot of time um, receiving teachings directly from the Jushi, so the very visionary side of things. Now, um, if someone has a direct vision of Manjushi, uh, please report it to me, <laughs> to your Lama, uh, because also there's a strong tradition in Tibet where uh, we, we know that visions by themselves are not directly validating um, that um, we have to uh, also verify them and check them out too, um, so that uh, we don't uh, just become inflated or um, or, you know, run off. Uh, so even Tsongkhapa, um, you know, checked his visions against texts with other teachers and, um, you know, in his own practice. But that's a big part of our practice is the visionary practice that aids the scholarly practice. <clears throat> so actually, I, I want to stop here for a second and um, go to the audience and see if there are any like questions um, or comments about what I've said. So uh, maybe it's a good time to pause so we don't have to always wait to the end. What do you think? <clears throat> so I need to unmike. No, no, just tell them to. Oh, okay. So unmike if you have something to say. Well, um, I'll say thank you very much because uh, that for what you're about to do. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Derek. I don't know if you're, you're trying to get Derek or not, but. Um... <clears throat> so you can talk. Okay, so. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to introduce, like sometimes people uh, newcomers think, oh, when we're doing um, ancient ones practice, Sorry, Nyingma sorry. practice, it's, we're just doing um, Padmasambhava um, or Longtempa or Jigme uh, Lingpa or something like that, when we're doing um, or Gelug practice, we're just doing Manjushri or Tsongkhapa or something. So, what I, interesting I wanted to point out is that the Manjushri practices are uh, really universal through uh, all the schools of Dharma, uh, Mahayana and Vajrayana Dharma, um, uh, also particularly strong in the Zen practice. So in Zen, those um, uh, Japanese or the Zen meditation halls, a lot of times you don't have um, a statue of Shakyamuni or even a statue of Bodhidharma, you have a statue of Manjushri. And a lot of times in the uh, Japanese Chinese world, uh, Manjushri is riding on uh, an animal. So uh, I believe he's usually riding on uh, a lion, but he may be riding on a, um, an elephant. So maybe some of the scholars there know the answer to that. I'm not sure. <clears throat> But if people have some comments about how we do a scholarship at this point, I'd be interested if anybody wants to make a comment. Mama, it's Roberta, just with a question. So um, I, I would say for myself, Manjushri has never been in my years of experience, the foremost deity that, um, has been espoused as a practice to do. And so maybe it's a fear on my part or something like that, but um, I'm wondering why that is.
Bamala, your mic isn't on. Uh, Mama, can I'm you hear me? <laughs> do, we, do we have, we don't have it. Can you repeat that, please? What did I just say? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the agenda, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, the um, the purpose of scholarship is to embody, uh, and we say scholarship is realization. Um, it's not just information, of course, or being smart or figuring things out. Um, so, uh, but one of, one of the big byproducts that I was taught is that uh, scholarship, real scholarship. Uh, real learning makes someone very gentle, like Manjushri. So you can cut through delusion with a, a very sweet, gentle voice. We don't have to be like screaming at each other. We don't have to be, um, you know, harsh. Um, debate's not about winning, it's about enjoying um, the uh, sword, the flaming sword. So, <clears throat> Uh, it should feel like uh, when we're practicing Manjushri, there's a feeling of a, a, a like hot knife through warm butter or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's this very gentle, you know, just like that. So <clears throat> uh, in the Manjushri practice, uh, there, there's uh, precision and gentleness uh, usually things that are seen as like opposite, right, um, are combined. <laughs> so uh, wisdom is defined in different ways. Um, so uh, because people have taken refuge for me, because then you have uh, Yeshe as uh, your first name, uh, which is the uh, translation for jhana, which is uh, non-dual knowledge, um, the 10th tenth, the tenth last paramita. The prajna, uh, so pra plus jhana is um, sometimes discriminated, uh, translated as wisdom, um, but I spent a whole year talking with Dr. Gunther so some people might have read in these, no, no, you got to put down discriminating wisdom, um, wisdom that uh, is able to differentiate. <clears throat> so we have these different kinds of wisdom uh, and eventually we have, of course, like practical wisdom. So uh, Manjushri, particularly with a sword, represents not just the intellect, but the ability to um, uh, cut through. So. Uh, we're not going to talk about Dzogchen tonight, but some of you know, like one of the main uh, um, forms that we call cutting, cutting through. <laughs> so Manjushri, uh, uh, we had a Manjushri initiation with uh, Kansa Rebshe, and uh, I, I found uh, Manjushri Tanka from my friend in Davis. Um, Hera Sakya, and uh, we have it on the side here. Um, so uh, I'd like a Manjushri statue too <laughs> at some point. So let's ask another question too. Mama, it's Ellen. I was a couple minutes late, so I apologize if I missed the context, but I'm wondering if this uh, connection with Manjushri is particular to the tenants. I heard you say that it's good to have this practice if we're going to study the tenants, but is there more connection beyond that? Well, yes, because um, really the uh, we we need to hold. Um, discrimination and non-discriminating wisdom and non-dual wisdom together at the same time. So 
So, uh, and high level teaching, we can do that and we have to do that. So uh, we, we do need a lot of inspiration um, to do it. We do need uh, to cultivate uh, inside before we uh, start using the intellect. Otherwise, it's like, um, you know, kind of putting a sharp knife in our pocket or something. So uh, we'll be spending time on tenants, you know, all the cutting, you know, cutting through appearances, and then we have unique tenants school, and um, well, uh, hopefully not. There won't be too many tears. Hopefully, people will go, "Oh, I'm in, I'm enjoying uh, this very fine um, uh, practice of um, taking the stones out of the rice." So that would be something in the old days in a monastery they would have you do when you come in, you're punk. <laughs> so they, they'd say, here's your bag and you'd have to like, you know, pick out the rice and uh, out of the stones out of the rice. Uh, and the statement by, a famous statement by uh, Guru Rinpoche, my view is as vast as the sky and as my action is as fine as barley flour like that so when those two are combined then we have the correct um, attitude towards scholarship <clears throat> thank you yay <laughs> so anybody else want to chime in do Thompson. a little practice Thompson, thank you oh thank you yeah Hey, Lama, Miss Elizabeth, uh, wasn't Manjushri a historical figure? Could you repeat that? Uh, wasn't Manjushri a historical figure? Uh, well, what kind of history are you talking about? You know, like, that's important. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> Wasn't he? Oh, you're talking uh, about like, yeah. uh, you know, the Battle of Hastings <laughs> kind of history. Um, oh, yeah. Manjushri oh, and the Bodhisattvas, oh. we're talking about Mahayana history, of course, right? Yeah. So which is different than, um, uh, you know, uh, conventional time history. Right. Sure. We can't have um, you and Lama interact directly. So I'm actually unhooking the microphone and the headset that I have so that Lama can listen to you and muting Lama's camera. So we can't have you guys interact directly at this point because of how the tech is. So um, it's sort of a delay. Um, so from you guys talking, just let me know, like pause so we can you know, mute and unmute. And then, you know, it's sort of a, a delay and pause while I mute my speaker and unmute Llama. So, um, sorry about that. You're unmuted. <laughs> okay, so we need to hear from Elizabeth. Wasn't Manjushri one of the early followers of the Buddha? A, a historical figure. Could you repeat that? I couldn't catch that. Oh, wasn't the Buddha, wasn't Manjushri one of the early followers of the Buddha? A historical figure. Uh, not, uh, not according to Theravada, so Manjushri wouldn't be found in the regular, uh, list of, uh, monks, right? 
Um, so Manjushri is a, a Mahayana figure. <clears throat> so we could say Mahayana history, right? Um, many of the Mahayana sutras uh, are given at Vulture Peak. Um, I'm not sure exactly where um, chanting the names of the Manjushri that, tong that uh, Tantra is given, but uh, sometimes it's given at a historical place. Sometimes uh, it just emerges from awareness, right? So uh, it's important to know that when we're reading the uh, text here, uh, there is a kind of timelessness about it. Um, but uh, at the same time, they may have been given at a certain time. For example, when, when we're reading the Shastras that Asanga uh, composed, uh, we would uh, see them as um, channeled uh, from uh, the Tushita heaven where Maitreya uh, lives. So um, that's important. And also from a uh, sacred point of view, uh, we're not reading texts or doing practices that we haven't heard directly from our teacher or, or a qualified teacher, right? So that's why I'm going to read out a sum from, from you, you know. Um, so uh, traditionally, you wouldn't just kind of surf the internet and um, generally read things that um, aren't directly connected with one's Lama, because the idea is one's Lama uh, is uh, uh, the composite of uh, the you know, and the Dakini so carries that power, you see, and, and therefore you have the blessings. So, so much in Vajrayana um, is uh, <laughs> conditioned with, uh, in, until you see the blessing or the empowerment or the permission from the teacher, you won't gain any realizations. So, I'm, I don't care about my reputation, so I, you know, share like my struggles as a student. So, of course, I would read things um, that I would, you know, I would read things that hadn't come through my teacher, and then uh, I would ask Geshla or my other teachers uh, um, what the meaning was, and they would say. Did I give you that transmission? Where'd you get that empowerment? And they go, well, I, I just, you know, thought it'd be good to read it. And they go, no wonder, you know, you know, no wonder you don't know anything. <laughs> so uh, uh, we have to have the uh, personal instruction and at least some connection with uh, uh, primordial wisdom, even when we're dealing um, uh, with uh, conventional valid perceptions, let alone uh, direct yogic perception, don't you think? So, one more question, then I'll read through a text. For people's benefit, uh, I'd like to read through the um, very famous called Praise of Aryaman Jushri, the Angloma. Um, and we, we do, for people that have uh, the booklet already, a meditation on Orange Manjushri, like it's in here. So, oh my God. Who is? Oh, okay. So when you say you're presenting it, what does that mean? You have to read it? No. Oh, it's not on yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's there. I can't see it. <laughs> okay, so I think we're on. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> to the guru, no, it, 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 it's not Manjushri, a prostrate. Your intellect being free of the clouds of the two veils, you shine as brilliant and pure as the sun. You hold a book to your heart because you see exactly all meaningfulness. You love as much as an only child, every being, all of us afflicted by suffering, being enveloped in dark ignorance in the dungeon of existence. Your speech has 60 melodious qualities. Roaring like a dragon, you awaken us from the slumber of the kleshas, freeing us from the chains of karma. Bearing your sword, you cut the manifold seedlings of suffering, clearing away the darkness of ignorance. Pure from the beginning and having attained the 10th Bhumi, your physical qualities are those of a principal bodhisattva adorned with 112 attributes. To Manjushri who clears away the darkness of my mind, I bow down. So now we say maybe 108 ending with D. Omara Patsanadi, 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 Omara Om Ara Patsanadi, 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 Lovingly, your supreme knowledges, ray, light rays, fully dispel the dark ignorance of my mind. Please grant me courageous intelligence to fully understand the scriptures of the sutras and shastras. Glorious, precious root guru. Please be seated on a lotus seat above my head with your guidance. Please guide me and bestow the cities of your body, speech, and mind. All right, that's good. <clears throat> so, um, then, uh, I'd like to read through um, a text that uh, I downloaded from uh, Lotsawa House. Um, Lotsawa means translator, translating. Uh, um, <clears throat> uh, this one is uh, a brief Manjushri Sadhana by um, Patra Mache. Of course, people that have done some retreats up at um, Lotus View, not that I'm fond of uh, Patra Rinpoche. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he composed many texts. So this, this is findable on the uh, uh, Lotsawa House uh, website uh, uh, called Brief Manjushri Sadhana by uh, Patra Rinpoche. It goes like this. In the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly, I take refuge until I attain enlightenment. Through the merit of practicing generosity and so on, may I attain Buddhahood 
for the benefit of all beings. May all sentient beings enjoy happiness and the cause of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the sacred happiness devoid of suffering. And may they dwell in boundless equanimity that is free from attachment and aversion. Om Sabhava Shuddha Sarva Dharma Sabhava Shuddha. Out of a state of emptiness upon a lotus and moon disk appears my own mind as D from which Manju Gosha arises. Orange in color with two hands holding a sword and a volume of text. He wears jewel ornaments and silken garments and is seated in the Vajra posture. At his heart upon a moon disk is D surrounded by the mantra garland. From which light radiates clearing obscurations and expanding wisdoms presence. So uh, maybe we went too fast. I don't know for people who don't know the mantra. It's Om A Ra Pa Sa Na Di. So that's short, right? Easy. Om A Ra Pa Sa Na Di. Om A Ra Pa Sa Na Di like that, yeah. <clears throat> the D um, letter uh, is quite complicated, but you will see it in stylized form uh, as uh, the, um, kind of the logo of Sarah, Sarah J. And I'm sure it's on other logos as well. <clears throat> also, the uh, you'll see with a lot of teachers through all the lineages, um, Many of the, the, the great teachers uh, will be depicted uh, with kind of uh, <laughs> lotuses growing up the side. So one lotus will be supporting a uh, you know, sword and another lotus supporting a text, right? Like that. <clears throat> so we're, we're going to do um, another 108 mantras. Can, can we do it? OK. Everyone here is saying yes. Yeah. Great. Very, very nice people here tonight. <laughs> oh, Mara Patsanadi. 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 Did uh, did instructions uh, say do as many times uh, as possible. So um, uh, 
it, it would be a lot more than 108. Add a few more zeros, I'm sure. Do it. If he was here, he would say, like, uh, okay, um, uh, go away <laughs> and come back after 100,000 or a million or something. But uh, his instructions say, uh, recite chanting the names of Manjushri, the Nama Samgiti. Um, this is something uh, that we will go over together sometime, maybe next time I talk. Um, this is one of the first things in many monasteries uh, the young uh, monks and nuns would memorize. So uh, when you first get to a monastery, um, they obviously don't just give you text to do. You just have to memorize until the blood's coming out of your ears. You're, you're not really seen as kind of the real thing until you've memorized these basic uh, prayers and these basic texts. And everybody does things um, uh, out loud. That's traditional. So you're, people are reading out loud, which is kind of different for us, right? We're used to kind of reading silently and memorizing, right? But um, monasteries are not retreat centers. Retreat centers are retreat centers. Uh, monasteries, like, there, there'll be people, uh, students, walking around 11 o'clock at night out loud, just reciting stuff. <laughs> it's really interesting. You know, they'll just be walking, like, you know, talking out loud, right? Because that's the only way to do it. They're not just reading texts and, and repeating them silently to themselves. Apparently it works, right? It must work, because people can remember huge amounts. So um, that's another thing uh, for you. Um, uh, discipline for you scholars, then uh, you might try uh, like with uh, attendance, let alone the Shastras, actually just say them out loud. Just get your book out and like read through it like you're proofreading it, okay? Just read it out loud. Just read it out loud. Go over it and read it out loud. So like that. So if you're living with someone, they will, they will think you've lost your mind. Um, so they may have already known that, figured that out, so you should be okay. But you know, reading it out loud, even read some of the charts I've given, read them out loud. So you know, it sticks in, right? Good idea? Okay. <clears throat> then, um, yes, questions. Question. Who has a question? Yes. Go ahead, Ellen. Oh, I wasn't sure if you called on me. I was wondering, Lama, does the mantra have a literal translation or is it just a mantra of a collection of syllables? Sound mantra. You can look it up. Tell me oh, what you find. Homework. OK, thank you. For that invitation, I'll do that. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Definitely. Hello, uh, Mala. I was it, uh, on the recitation. <laughs> I can't even think today. On the, because maybe too much Manjushri right now. Uh, on the recitation of the uh, D. Uh, should we continue to recite it while we breathe in and breathe out so that we continuously recite it, or is that not a good idea? Your mic isn't on, Lana. Yeah, it depends. So uh, a lot of times, you know, people just whatever breath they have, but you could you could do it longer. So you, you could be kind of breathing in and breathing out while, while you're reciting it. Um, so sometimes I do both. Uh, generally, generally it's done really loudly. So you need, you need some breath. But you could do either one, just whatever breath you've got. Um, or you could go a little bit longer like that. So it's interesting. It's an interesting um, breath control situation, you know, like that. So 
Um, I can't say that I've attained any cities as a result of it, but I'll just tell you a story is that when I was um, uh, working at a group home uh, with um, these young men, my, my young murderers, um, uh, of course, I just looked like a wimp, but you know, so they would have done all these fantastic things um, that I haven't done. Um, and I was trying to figure out a way that I could show that actually I had some strength or some cred or something, because just a white kid from the suburbs, you know, like that. So I um, uh, decided I'd, I'd do a contest where I could uh, do a sound uh, longer than anybody else. So whatever sound they wanted to pick, like, you know, I suggested some like a Homer ah, but D, you know, so I, I beat them all. <laughs> that was that was a long time ago. <laughs> Don't try me on that now. But you know, then uh, you know there, there was some respect there. <laughs> Whoa, you could do it. Yeah. So uh, it is important the mind, you know, doing uh, uh, the. Uh, inner tantras, uh, uh, doing the vajra body, um, doing working with the winds, uh, then uh, having the sound and the breath and the mind coordinated for long, uh, for a long time can be very helpful. I like that. Uh, could I follow up with that? <laughs> uh, Sometimes you have when you're working with teenagers, you have to demonstrate miracles, don't, don't you think? <laughs> Like that. Sir, follow question. Okay. Uh, you know, I, uh, so are you saying that it's good to, when, when you're talking about doing it not on the in breath, with what breath you have, is it good to go d d d d d d d d d d all of the breath and d d d d d d d because I was really yelled at for doing mantra that way. So that's why I'm asking. Um, it, it's preferable to do it just one one long breath yes um you uh, you you had some wonderful teachers who were willing to scream at you so that that has paid off hasn't it you know so yeah so they trusted you otherwise they wouldn't have said anything but yes it, it's uh when when we're teaching people um uh, sometimes if all they have is a few D's left in them, then you have to give them the opportunity to um, do another breath. So um, uh, here at Lionsaur, of course, if we did everything um, kind of on retreat level or monastery level, um, I wouldn't have you know, very few students at all, right? So uh, <laughs> although you're all coming up, okay, you're coming up. But um, yeah, so it is traditional just to try to do it all one breath like that. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, but you're but you're not taking then another breath and doing it again. Is that what you're saying? So I guess I don't understand really. <laughs> Dirk, could you repeat that, please? Ah. Uh, so, are you saying that you just do one breath of d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d until you run out, and then after you've run out, then that's when you're finished. Yeah, generally yes. Okay, that's that. Thank you. Generally yes, but but of course, you know, when teaching people things, sometimes you have to give them the opportunity because they might only have like d d, and then you. <laughs> no, don't say DD. It's not, you know, DD. You're, you know, you got to go a little longer. So you do encourage them to take another breath and teaching it. But yes, the way you do it is correct. Uh, Roberta, I think you've tried to ask a question a couple times. Do you have a question? Yeah, I was just feeling kind of ignorant thinking, wow, are there a lot of mantras that I'm missing how I'm supposed to be doing them? Because I'm kind of clueless about that, really. Uh, clueless about which mantras. 
I don't know about any of them that I've said over the years, you know, like, am I supposed to be like holding my breath in or out or I don't know, but I'm certainly understanding about DDD now. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of different ways to do things. Of course, sorry, a lot of different ways. So um, uh, that's important to know. You know, there, there's, you know, if, if you kind of, you know, get within the zone and we go over it, you're probably in, you're probably in the right bandwidth, you know, but there's so many different ways, you know, styles of doing, like for example, doing seven line prayer and, and things like that, even in the same monasteries. So it, it's, it's important to know that, you know, sometimes variety is okay. And also there are lots of Tibetan stories about people that have gained uh, realization through doing the mantra wrong. <laughs> and then, you know, somebody comes up to them and says, no, you're doing it wrong, do it this way. And then when they do it that way, nothing happens. So there are lots of stories and jokes about that. So we so, can go over it, okay? Should I take from that then it's really about my intention that it's, uh, is what is most, most important about that? Well, yes and no, you know, I mean, like if somebody, you know, we, we, if somebody is talking to us, uh, we we want to hear exactly what they're saying. So if they're saying something significant like "I love you," we and hear like "I love you," then we, we do want to hear it exactly, right? So it's not black or white. I mean, you want to get it in there enough so that somebody goes, "Oh, okay, that's what you're doing." But there's there's a real strong difference even in Tibet between you know, um, do and the rest of Tibet, and you know, that's a long story, but you, you want to be kind of in the right zone, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll talk, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, hmm. Is there another question? All right, okay. Sasha, do you want to ask a question? Uh, sure. Um, the other question was I was reading about this mantra as Lama was talking. Um, it appears to be help with the wisdom, memory, and understanding of the scriptures is what I'm understanding. Does it help with scriptures that are not of the Buddha Dharma? or teachings that are not a Buddha Dharma. So if you're, I don't know, studying something, anything, to recite this before you go into any period of study? Um, yes. So uh, when, um, uh, I was studying, like, uh, my teacher talked me into going into grad school, right? So uh, then I had some exams and papers. So uh, these are just secular topics, right? But virtuous ones, but so yeah, you do Manjushri practice for tests particularly, where you had to remember something. Uh, the, the, the function of memory is really interesting, not only as a useful tool, but uh, to see how mind works. So, uh, uh, of course, Manjushri practices much more than uh, being able to memorize, but um, the, the debates about memory and the function of memory 
are, are very interesting and we get into that in tenants actually. But uh, hopefully if you're doing Manjushri practice for to some other study, it's, it's something um, useful and good, right? Hope so. Mm. Okay, so uh, we have time for another um, text. Um, uh, this one, Mipa uh, Mirpche, uh, who lived in 19th century. <clears throat> We've done some things with Mipam Rimshe before, but um, you can look up the biographies later. I'd like to read out uh, what's called In Praise of Manjushri, The Great Treasure of Blessings. <clears> Om <throat> um, Supreme Wisdom Body, Youthful Manjushri, to you I prostrate. Powerful Lord of gentle and melodious speech, to you I prostrate. Wisdom being with a mind of perfect knowledge, to you I prostrate. Auspicious coincidence of all the Buddha's wisdom, to you I prostrate. Wielder of the sword of wisdom, to you I prostrate. Holder of the lotus of skillful means, to you I prostrate. Shooter of the piercing arrow of knowledge, to you I prostrate. Draw of the great bow of compassion, to you I prostrate. By remembering you, my Lord and protector, Manjugosha, and praying with devotion from the depths of my heart, guide me and care for me in your great wisdom and cause the eight great treasures of my courageous eloquence to be released, I pray. So the eight great treasures um, are, it, it's on the text, so you don't have to write it down. The treasure of recollection, the treasure of intelligence, the treasure of realization, the treasure of retention, the treasure of courageous eloquence, treasure of dharma, treasure of bodhicitta, treasure of accomplishment. So uh, once again, guide me and care for me in your great wisdom and cause the eight great treasures of my courageous eloquence to be released, I pray. So we're going to do the mantra again. Um, <clears throat> uh, a little thing about uh, sometimes uh, people think, well, the, these prayers are not as powerful as doing uh, a big long sadhana, you know, with all the um, uh, rituals and offerings and so forth. But uh, of course, um, that's not the way they're regarded in the tradition. Many times um, uh, these are written spontaneously and are very powerful um, and short. So uh, Tsongkhapa's famous text, Praise of Dependent Rising, was, was written in retreat just spontaneously. Just uh, my guess is this, this one by Mipam too. And also as a request from uh, a student. So there, uh, uh, part of the style of it is also uh, this feeling of request, uh, supplication, um, uh, you know, praying with devotion. So as, as we know, that also uh, is an essential part of uh, gaining wisdom. So in Vajrayana, we don't think, well, intelligence is just um, being really smart and figuring things out. Uh, it's fueled by uh, bodhicitta, it's fueled by uh, devotion and love, and the prayers are meant to um, help evoke that. So uh, these, these are regarded as uh, just, uh, you know, as powerful as, as doing you still need to do the offerings, but you know, like they're they're extremely powerful. So sometimes people think, well, I skip the prayers and I do the real thing. I go, well, no, the, those the supplications and the longing 
is the real thing. And you do the meditation so you realize the truth of what you're praying about, right? That makes sense, right? <laughs> They're not just kind of, okay. <clears throat> so remembering you, my Lord and protector, and praying with devotion from the depths of my heart, guide me and care for me in your great wisdom and cause the eight great treasures of my courageous eloquence to be released, I pray. Om Mara Patsanadi, 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 So, what this one also has Hung added to it. So this is a special, like, a, uh, you know, probably a Tarama teaching. So we're going to do Om Arapasana Di Hung, H-U-N-G, at, at the end. And then we'll do the D again. Ready? Om Arapasana Di Hung, 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 Om Oh, Mara Pasanadi, Hung, O Mara Pasanadi, Hung, O Mara Pasanadi, Hung, O Mara Pasanadi, O Mara Pasanadi, Hung, 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 O Mara Pasanadi, Omar of Omar Patsanadi, 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 Omar Omar Pasanadi, 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 Omar uh, text written by the one called D during a session in a retreat focused upon the great and glorious subjugator on the first day of the ninth month of the Iron Snake year, 1881, may virtue abound. So, <clears throat> so we don't have time right now to do um, uh, Kenshin uh, Jigme Punchuk's, um, but we've covered um, a lot, so uh, you've gotten the reading on this, um, and uh, we'll go over it some more next time. <clears throat> uh, uh, being a skeptical Westerner, when I first was uh, reading the text, um, uh, I thought I was just pretty smart. <laughs> so. But I found that actually the practice works. So there's something that happens when we um, uh, do uh, really contact uh, Manjushri, uh, develop the um, practice, and then study from uh, that point of view. So maybe we have time for just a couple of questions and we can close. <clears throat> Uh, Lamala, uh, let's start again. 
Do you uh, know where we could get the text of the names of Manjushri? Sorry, Lama, your mic's not on again. Okay, there. So, um, the the translation, the old translation in book form that I have is by Alex Wayman, who uh, was an early translator, and I'm sure there's more to it. There's been other translators. So it'd be interesting if we could find that. I'm sure it's been retranslated because it's so popular. And uh, so I'd be interested if we could both look for that. That would be nice. It's a really strange text. Uh, you know, um, if you're reading it, it doesn't, um, anyway, it's strange in a good way. Let's, let's look. Sasha just think. uploaded a link. I don't know if it's accurate. It's from FPMT. I just did a search on it. I could be providing incorrect information. Any other questions? Comments or complaints? Just Comments. complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Roberta. It was a thank you. Oh, good. Yeah, thank you. You guys can just interact. Hi. We can interact now. Can you hear me, people? All right. Yes. Oh, that works. You know, we're in the process of setting up a whole studio here. That's the point. So we need all that we need we need to gather it all together. So some people may be aware of this dedication uh, to close, but since uh, it invokes Manjushri. Uh, and my other favorites. So I'll do it for people. Maybe some people already know it. May my Bodhicitta mind arise like Avalokiteshvara. May my wisdom rise like Manjushri. May my mind transcend all duality and become spacious like the sky. May all the qualities of Padmasambhava's body, speech, and mind become dissolved and become inseparable with myself. May I dedicate all this enlightenment to everyone. Oh, my own. <laughs> So we, we can type that up and hand that out too. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think uh, we we should uh, stop here because my voice is gone. But um, <laughs> but uh, it's important uh, if people still have the text uh, of on averting. Uh, uh, the Diseases of Shakya by Tantong Gyalpo, right? So, um, and, uh, you know, other, uh, what else do we have for averting disease, right? Who else do we have? The prayers. Um, I have one by Dijim Rinpoche for the Dijim reincarnation. That's good. Could you, could you read that out for us? And, and we'll end there. Uh, sure. It'll take me just a moment here. Yeah. To uh, load up the program for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So while Dirk is looking, um, Connor reminded me this uh, Thursday, seven thirty our time, right? Um, uh, Councilor Ramshe will be giving uh, maybe just 20 minutes, but very concise talk on introduction to Tantra. So I'm very interested to see what he has to say. Um, and uh, if you can't tune in live, I mean, I, I know it'll be posted somewhere, right? 
but uh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, I have it whenever. Yeah, we're ready. Okay. And now, of course, I clicked on the wrong tab. The first power of desire and attachment. I'm, I'm going to start over. This is a prayer to swiftly pacify the sudden contagion of pandemics. By His Holiness Dijim Rinpoche, this was written in April of this year. The fierce power of desire and attachment stains our naturally beautiful environment with filth. Causing earthquakes, wildfires, floods, typhoons, and more. And sentient beings, I'm having difficulty here. When sentient beings suffer harm from the elements, pray to origin, longevity deity of immortality. Please quell the destruction of our environment and all it contains, and externally dispel obstacles from the outer turmoil of the elements. The poisonous power of anger and aggression twists virtue and evil, devastates animals, and damages health through food and behavior, bringing sudden fevers with chills and heat. Where there is suffering from viruses, the karmic debt of bodies, pray to Yidan Kilaya. Please end epidemics and pandemics, and internally dispel obstacles from inner diseases. The darkness of unawareness and stupidity spoils the minds of beings with all kinds of concepts and rattles the mammoths of the world, causing plagues from the mammoths, illness from spirits, and more. When sentient beings are wretched with misfortune from disease, pray to the wisdom dakinis. Please, throughout all existence, pass the vile plagues from the mammoths and dispel secret obstacles of mental turmoil into the infinite pure expanse. And there's a colophon. You want to hear, should I read the colophon? To quell the destruction caused by the distressful pandemic that is everywhere in the world these days, Sangye Pema Shepa, one named as an incarnation of Dijum, composed this emphatic prayer to the sublime refuge for beings in dark times, the Mahaguru, and to the Yidam and the three wisdom deities on the 10th day of the second month of the Tibetan Iron Rat year, April 3rd, 2020. May it be virtuous. Can't hear you, Can't hear you Lama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, yeah, for reading that and finding that. And uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. You know, so uh, it's it's wonderful even to be virtually uh, connected. Um, that uh, actually, I'd like to meet people in pe person, but Vajrayana particularly is geared to meet people on the Sambhogakaya realm, right? So. The internet is like the Sambhogi Kaya realm. <laughs> we can meet there. All right. I'll see hopefully some of you soon. Omahong blessings. <laughs>